materials management is uh, extremely important if you whenever you are going to talk about productivity or quality management especially in the context of plants manufacturing plants and so on you would really have to think about uh, material material management different types of materials are there and i would like to start the discussion with some basic ideas like at your home uh, you would see that there are different types of materials are there uh, at your home like in your kitchen the different types of materials are there some materials are there which you have to buy every week there are other materials which you buy once every month and so on uh, like your cooking oil and so on maybe you will buy a bigger bottle and it will stay you for three weeks and so on but maybe other items like you know you can think about any items which you buy more frequently you are buying it um, in days or in weeks how often you go to uh, do your grocery and that is many times dependent on uh, the money extra money you have uh, you um, how you are being paid are you being paid monthly uh, it will be different type of uh, routine or timetable you would have to do grocery if you are paid every week it is different type of routine you are going to develop where do you buy your products from are you go to just go and buy um, from some of the grocery stores or you go to uh, papine and you do go to some other market uh, and uh, you buy from uh, vendors who are sitting on the road or something like that uh, that is going to give you different cost so where do you buy those things from how do you store your things where do you put them in fridge or you put them in refrigeration or uh, outside how much space you have to put those things in your in your home for example for kitchen items uh, do you have a lot of space you have stored so you are going to do it differently if you don't have a lot of space then it is differently how do you consume your things when you buy in bulk do you consume them faster if you if that is the case and you want to decrease the cost of consumption that maybe you are not going to bring a lot of things together because then you will be consuming it like you know because you have you see so many things you will consume it yeah so for example if you if you like to eat apples so if you buy if you you can eat one apple one day you can buy one apple every day on your way to way to work and eat it but if you bring in like a dozen apples at home maybe you will eat two three in a day one in the morning and maybe when you go home apples are there so you will eat them so you need to think about that and uh, uh, these are the and then you know if some guests are coming so now your consumption is going to increase so you need to plan you need to budget for that and in that planning you will see how you are going to uh, buy maybe more things uh, what things you keep in your inventory and what things you don't keep in your inventory and how many items you keep in your inventory like bulbs for example in, in your home in your house bulbs sometimes go back go bad so do you keep extra bulbs in your home if yes how many you keep one you keep five you keep 20 so that is again dependent on your how, what you want to want to do or in how much time you will use those 20 bulbs yeah so a hotel which has a lot of bulbs is going to buy very differently than a small household which has maybe three four rooms or something like that so all these things are the plant manager also considers the material manager also consider all these things it is just that the products may be change uh, uh, maybe the scope the scale of things may be changed it's a bigger scale but they are thinking about same type of things which which you and me 
think about when we are taking care of any type of material in our own life and kitchen is something which everyone is in one way or other they are linked because we the items which we eat uh, where to buy where to store how much to buy what days to buy by what times all of these things so in the in the plant also people are doing the same type of things based on the needs and so on so that is why you can imagine how important it is to manage different materials like for example you if some material is of essential use like everyday use and it is not at your home like for example cooking oil it is finished you have no oil so how are you going to cook maybe you cannot you will have to think about something else which does not maybe require oil or something like that this is an essential item for you or salt for example is essential item you can have everything at home but you don't have match stick how are you going to ignite a uh, fire uh something like that so you have to so many materials are involved to do one task to cook food one one dish you need so many materials and if some materials are missing maybe you are maybe it's your home and you are maybe eating alone or maybe you don't mind if something is missing if salt is missing and you will eat without salt but that type of thinking cannot work in the plant in the real business environment so companies take a lot of time in managing these materials and then you can think about the inventories also in the in this and uh, as you would realize that this course is the prerequisite for this course is mgmt 2026 production and operation management so actually if you will look at it i'm just building on what what the things which you should have studied in that in that course for example inventory management is a major topic in that so concepts like fifo lifo all those type of things pricing you need to think about uh, those those type of things uh, and that is one reason the the textbook is more or less same for both the courses because not all the topics you the operations management book some topics you do in 2026 some topics you do in 3057 but it's the same type of operations management type of book you would need to look into these these topics yeah so now you think about other things like different materials are uh, there like you know your uh, Uh, in the in the plant different types of materials are there which you would need in, if you want to think about inventory storage it would need certain environments uh, where they can be stored like dry environment or cold very cold chilled blasting freezers that is the environment sometimes is is required to store some products um, so you would have to prepare for that Uh, in terms of materials management some some materials expire very quickly uh, their shelf life is not long so you would either have to make some adjustments in your buying purchasing is a big big uh, thing you would want to read on when you are looking at material management how companies make purchasing decision for example it is linked with finance how much money is available how much money you want to put in this in buying this now what is the price which you will get now if you buy it and what is the price you will get if you buy it after 2 months the price change especially you can think about international businesses if it is international business products which go in different countries then maybe your supply chain is big uh how much you want to put in the reserve buffer stocks for example that is something which you would want to consider uh, as you would have seen that in recent times because of covid-19 supply chain management of various companies was impacted on the same time as we say that many business got impacted in a bad way of course Uh, because of covid 19 there are many businesses which uh, boomed 
in COVID-19 also. What was that? They had the capability, capacity of maybe managing materials in a better way. That is, that can be one reason of the of the success. Or maybe they were not managing their materials directly. Yeah. Oh, oh, with with this background, uh, you would want to think you a good know-how of materials, different type of materials. Uh, like you are making some product, you are making a ballpoint. What are the components of a marker or ballpoint? Let's say marker. So it would need ink, it would need plastic, it would need nib, those type of things. So knowing, knowledge of those materials and knowledge of what are the advancements coming in those materials. Like in terms of ink, what different type of inks are available in the market what is their cost which countries are making those things networking and all of those things you would want to think about that when you are thinking about materials management what are the new materials being made by engineers by chemists in that field uh, you are making a chair the the cloth which is being used or the chair which is being used what are the other options for you what are their pricing how much time it can take for them to come here how the con consumer is going to like it or not like it what is the response of the consumer on that testing uh, testing is a very big important factor like when they make uh, for example looking at this laptop now uh, you guys must be using laptop or your phone or your desktop so it is made of if you look at your laptop i'm looking at my laptop right now it has different types of materials on it it has different screens it has different you know nuts camera is there keyboard uh, uh, touchpad different materials on the side the cable is different material so for any component you can pick and what is the material with which uh, they have made this this hand rest beside uh, the the mouse touchpad if you just just touch your touch your rub your fingers against your laptop on different surfaces of laptop how it feels how the how the key uh, keyboard feels uh, touch it feel it yeah with your fingers uh, the outside of your laptop when you close it how that outside service feels touch it feel it what is it's how it how it's the aesthetics of the product that is part of material management yeah like knock it i'm knocking my uh laptop what type of noise comes uh, from this uh, you can you can link it with the uh, with different cars now when you when you close the door of a car uh, what sound comes that sound is a product of the materials which are being used so different cars would make different type of sounds luxury cars are going to make totally different type of sounds as a matter of fact you don't have to slam the door at all it is it automatically closes you just have to press it uh, press the uh, car car door with the with the wall and it will it will just with the car and it will just uh, close itself yeah. um, auto close i think they they call it yeah so what is what is that that is technology and the material both things are involved there so knowledge of materials is very important in a job like materials management different type of materials know how uh, their feel the aesthetics the uh, the other features of quality for example how long they will last yeah because that is one characteristics which people look at when they are looking buying any product or service so i was giving you example of marker so ink plastic different types of how many different types of plastics are available for different markers 
you can go in the in the in the in the bookshop and look for different markers and just feel them like how they are different from all of them are markers but their plastics are different or the ball points the the way the ball points release the ink that is different and that is dependent on the pin which is on the on the on the ball point is it does it write how it writes how it feels when you are writing how it feels when you are holding the pen in your hand and you are writing that is part of materials if as you change materials that feel will will change so we can argue that you dip, you buy the you indirectly are buying the ball point but uh, you are direct, you are buying the ballpoint, but indirectly that is impacted by the by the type of materials which are being used to make that uh, ballpoint. You don't necessarily think about the materials in that sense. You just when you are in the shop to buy the ballpoint, you are just looking at your budget, how much you want to spend, and if it is writing reasonably for that price money, you have uh, they have they are. They are asking for if it makes sense to you and you will say okay no problem yes so knowledge of material like advancements of materials are coming now you can link it with other topics uh, and you need to do it in your own time please but i can help you a little bit to start thinking about it for example technology we spend considerable amount of time in talking about technology because that is very important topic uh, especially as we go in the future of improving productivity and quality management. Um, so how materials would be linked with technology like 3D printing, we spoke about that. Uh, you just need to buy a 3D printer and then you, sh you should have the materials which the 3D printer can take and then you can make your own things from that. You can make food from 3d printing you can print a house you can print your clothes so now you just need the right material to put in that 3d printer once you have the material you have the know-how of that people are making pots uh, with the 3d printer keychains yeah, how they are making it they just need the material so it's extremely important uh, material uh, because that is going to impact all the factors uh, which are linked with the quality. Uh, for example, warranty, warranty claims uh, is dependent on the materials. Then, of course, you can improve the materials. There is no limit of improving the material of, of anything, anything. Like I was talking about this plastic on the laptop, of course, you can buy the more expensive plastic and more expensive and more expensive, different types of plastic. And then you can go into other type of things which, which are used, which other companies are using. As a matter of fact, as the price of the laptop increases, Essentially, it is the materials which they are using. They are using different types of materials. And that is why the price is going like fabric, cloth. Many times it is just the, the, uh, the material which is being upgraded. And that material as it changes, the price changes, the, the market changes of the clients, which type of people are going to buy. So in that in that in that whole scheme of things, you need to think about materials, good knowledge of materials, working knowledge of materials. That is very important, extremely important. Uh, discounts will be there, for example. I'm thinking about discounts. So that is, I can give you my own example. I like to. I'm sure I've given it somewhere else also, but we can repeat. Like I like to eat bananas. Uh, uh, I found them very tasty. Uh, so 
My, one time what happened is that I was in some in some market and generally I would buy it from some superstore, but that time I was in the market, open vendor market. So the prices were are of course very low there. Uh, so and it was uh, evening time and the shop was kind of closing. So the guy gave me a big discount. Like if the if the bananas would cost like in the regular time, it would cost a thousand. He said you can take all of them for four hundred. That is quite a big discount, like massive discount. He was trying to give me. So I bought all of all of them and at a at a lower price. But he was selling it because they would. He knew that they will soon start going bad, and it's evening time, and it is best that he get rid of them and. Whatever money he can make, he should make that. But I did not maybe realize that. And of course, I had one or two bananas that night, maybe two. Yeah. And then next morning, by noon, when I saw them, they were kind of started going bad. So I took advantage of uh, the sale or the discounted price but my consumption was not that much so now that whatever money was spent yes i should be happy that i got a discount but it is not of much use to me i would now gift it to other people and whatever but anyone i give it to them by looking at the bananas he would know that okay he's now going bad so he's giving to other people <laughs> unless i am in the habit of giving bananas to other people then it is different So that factor is also quite important for uh, business purchasing. Like many times you would get discounts, but you will have to think about these things. And it is not just they will go bad or expire. It is also other things like do you have the space to put them for that period of time, whatever that period of time is. Um, and not just space, you are locking or blocking your money also, that money which you bought those things for at a discount you don't necessarily need those components right now maybe you need something else and but because you invested in those components now you don't have money to buy what you really want right now discount or no discount there is something which you want which you should have bought with that money which you did not and these are difficult uh, decisions because you know everyone likes to get a good bargain and discounts and save money but in, in material management you have to think about it very carefully that which materials are required uh, now which materials are required tomorrow which materials are required in this in this week because let think about any type of manufacturing, um, bigger level manufacturing like car. You are assembling a car, and there are certain nuts which are short, and you don't have those. But you got some discounts on maybe glass or the door or the steering wheel, and you bought a lot of them which you don't maybe need in this month or even in this week. What you need is those uh, those bolts which are very not, not very expensive, but it would take time for them to come and then all of those things. But you they, you don't have them. So your car is not car is not complete with those bolts. You have to put those bolts before it comes out of the assembly line. So you have everything else. You have uh, you have other things extra and you have saved money in uh, in discounts and so on. But there are some essential things which were required in today's operation or tomorrow's operation. You don't have them. Now your product cannot come off assembly line. There will be a lot of consequences for, for that because your customer is not thinking what you have in, in your inventory. Customer is thinking is the product ready which I want now. Customer is not going to wait. Uh, because maybe it is some essential item. So he's going to go for with for the competition. Car is not maybe 
that much of an essential item. People take a little bit of time. It is not you. You want a car today, and you will buy it today also. You you thought of buying a car today, and you will buy it also. That also happens, but for not for everyone. Very few people would would be like that. Like they will think, okay, I want a first time. They thought, okay, I want to. Buy a car today and then go in the market and buy the car today and start driving it today and get it registered everything today. Uh, they can do it in one day, but the thought process I'm saying would start for few days before, if not weeks or if not months. But for many people, they, it's a long term. Like they will say, okay, I, this year I need to change my car and then or this month I need to change my car or something like that. But think about it like that is why you would see that any look at any grocery um, places where you go for grocery. There would be certain items which will they will ensure that they are not short. Always you're going to find it. Always, no matter what. Uh, unless it is some situation like, you know, hurricane is maybe coming and people are like panic and they will go in the shops and buy everything that is different situation but outside of that they would they would ensure that the product is there same thing for for companies like merchandisers and those type of people which they have they ensure that the product is there well stocked also in the reserve so it never goes uh, uh, goes short People always find whenever they come for this product, they find it. Uh, so that they need to arrange that. It is part of material management. Like after coming out of your plant, you are managing, still managing the material that in the grocery store. My product is not, uh, is not short. It is there. So when people, because if your product is not there, then there is a competition product and very likely if the taste is not too much of a difference or the consumer is okay to you know consumer wants the product now it's going to say let me buy the other brand and that can be very dangerous for you because now until that time that customer was looking for your product and he liked your product and he came to buy that product in the grocery store but when he did not find it, he go to the competition. Now, he has tried the product of your competition and he has looked at the price. Maybe he will say, okay, well, this is the taste is, is not as good, but the price is very low. So I'm saving $200 here. So the taste is the taste is maybe, you know, Grace Kennedy taste is better. But Lasco, I'm saving a little bit of a money and taste is not like too much of a difference in that product. Uh, let me just buy that. But he, he went for, when we went to the shop, his intention was to buy Grace Kelly. It's just an example because some people prefer Lasco's taste than Grace Kennedy. So that is fine. You can. You can think about any other example, whatever suits you. It can be candy, chocolate, whatever you buy. So you go with the intention to buy one thing, but you go you go in the market to buy specific chips. But when those chips are not there, you are not going to come out without any chips, most likely, unless you plan to go to some other shop and specifically you are looking, you are hell bent to buy that specific chips. Then it is different. But many times people, generally speaking, they, they, they will say, okay, that is not there. I will get that or let me try this one or that. So that can really backfire if the other product which they try is, uh, is equally good or they start liking the taste or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so you made that, you, you allowed them to have to purchase the, uh, the other competition and even if the consumer is going to come back to your product let's say that 
your product was not there he went to the competition and next time when your product was there he comes back to you because he really likes your product even in that case you missed the opportunity of one sale so that that thing cannot can never come back you cannot recover from that there was one extra bag which he would have bought which he did not your customer did not and he came back okay but you lost one sale and your competition got one say more yeah so he has more money to compete with you so and we are talking about you know you let's say you are short for one day of in one major supermarket you are short and in that day how many customers are going to come not one customer many customers are going to come maybe 100 customers 100 people came for your chips or 50 people came for your chips in that supermarket so what is going to happen those 50 people are now going to competition how many will come back how many will know some other taste also like they'll say oh that taste is also that, that taste is registered in their in their head yeah uh -huh. So it's very interesting to think. So this is material management. Even after manufacturing, you need to manage these materials. So these are see how it is linked with productivity and and uh, quality. Uh, many other things are coming in my head also, but I think that is those are the major things. Uh, um, think about these things, but I'm going to quickly scan through maybe the slides and see if there's something which I really want to talk about like forecasting you looked at these things in MGMT 2026 uh, material requirements planning I did not use this term but essentially you are looking at the requirements what would be the requirements and then planning accordingly purchasing we spoke about that uh, available uh, bill of material is an interesting uh, concepts components used to make the product so what would be the bill of material for the cake you are going to make what are the things you put in the cake sugar flour whatever you put in that those will be the part of bill of material um, how much you will quantity and uh, the name of the product so bill is this bill is not necessarily the price you can add that also, but essentially it is components. What are the things which will be used? Uh, so this is like a terminology which is being used. So this way you are going to see many other terminologies which I might not have discussed. Don't worry about that. And a Google search and try to identify and find what those are. Uh, material handling, packaging. Yeah, packaging is quite an interesting topic package how do you like go in the grocery store and look at how different products are packaged like look at look at like you know juice for example juice bottles the shape of the bottle is different not all juices have same shape not all drinks have same shape different 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 shape then different different uh, um, labels they tell different stories those labels so look look at that packaging just go in some when next time you go grocery spend five ten minutes just walking around and just observing packages uh, you might not have although you go to grocery market all the time maybe a lot of time maybe but did you observe the packaging of different materials like just packaging no we don't do that we just go in the shop and just get the product we want and just move on. But next time you go look at the packaging, different materials are are being used. Different, some company using plastic, some company using some other things, tins and cans and different material. So what is that? How do they decide that they want to put it in a tin instead of a plastic and so on? Different shapes of uh, packaging. Uh, different sizes and so on yeah so observe the packaging just packaging alone how they they package it uh, 
uh, feel the packages like you know plus if even uh, you would see like it is a paper uh, but is is the thickness thinness of the paper that is different in different uh, products observe that what do they write on them observe that so packaging alone is a is a quite wide topic which one can talk as much as they want but i would really like that when next time you go to grocery look at the packaging of different things and they are in the same section like the ketchups are in the same section so look at different ketchups how they have different uh, different packaging different materials spe specifically materials different materials they have uh, they are using yeah and especially with the sustainable development uh, sustainability conversation like uh, carb co2 emission uh, reduction and these type of things they also impact a lot uh, on the packaging side and so on yeah so that is very interesting concept to look at yeah waste material for example yeah how a company uh, dispose their waste materials uh, look at different companies in jamaica how do they do they are the companies which are polluting air uh, are there companies which uh, leave their waste material in the in the sea mixed with water uh, many times that happens what are then the country would have regulations on those and you have to buy by those regulations and so on return goods is a material goods return customer did not like it want to change it uh, things expire you recall some product yeah. that is material how to are you going to throw away all the return good because it it expire or something like that or some so in depending on the product you might want to use some parts because maybe some parts are still functional or you might want to sell it at a lesser price yeah might want to uh, um, um, some companies cannot cannot do that because i am thinking of some examples I'm not sure if i uh, oh, very interesting luxury fashion brand saving high end waste material so it is waste materials forbes news what happens to all of the unsold clothes why fashion brands destroy billions worth of their own very interesting very good well not very good it's sad but i'm saying very good because i found what i was thinking why fashion brands destroy billions worth of their own merchandise every year an expert explains why Burberry, H&M, Nike, Urban Outfitters destroy unsold merchandise and what it says about customer culture. Yeah. So when you will read on these type of things, you are going to find that companies many times their material which is not sold, they're going to not put it on uh, discount. They are not going to give it away. Although many people in the world, they are poor and they could just give it away to them or things like that. They're going to burn it. They're going to put it in underground. They're going to just waste it. And it is, they are talking about billions. And these billions are, of course, not Jamaican dollars. This is US dollars they are talking about. Yes. So US billions. And they are talking every year. Yeah. It's a quite interesting topic, material management. Yeah. And what I I just I just said luxury clothes dumb. But you can find better words. Yeah. And very interesting stories. Burberry burns bags, clothes, and perfume worth millions. 
very interesting we could just talk about this today Burberry burns bags it's uh, and it is BBC yeah uh, 2018 not far yeah 28.6 million pounds worth perfumes accessories all of these are materials which they and these are finished products so they went all the hassle of you know sourcing and making and stitching and putting it in the taking it to the customer marketing all that expense also you need to think about and then at the end if they don't sell it they destroy them so this is their way of managing material the very you can you can have your own opinion on this if it is if you like it or not but it's very interesting yeah reject it covered so this way you you should you should run google searches and you know you see some word you want to know more about it you run you run some searches on it and see what is what is what uh, primary secondary should know that make or buy decisions yeah you do that in uh, 2026 should you outsource some some components or not uh, but run searches procurement systems for example try to read about procurement systems of different different uh, different companies look at procurement system of government of jamaica how do how, how government of jamaica procures goods and services that is part of material management they are doing a lot of things online earlier how the tenders were submitted now it is online many things and irrespective of covid they were already making electronic e procurement yeah so you can read about that um, purchasing we spoke about that storage inventory yeah reorder points lead time these are some terminologies coming from uh 2026 and equipment is also your material your machinery your plant equipment that is also part of your material because you need to upgrade it also service it take care of it put in you know repairs put in oil lubricate uh, and also always look out on the latest technology in terms of equipment that is very important uh, what what how what are the things your competition is using you need to have a know-how of that that is very important extremely important uh, what materials they are using but specifically equipment that is also part of your uh, material all the things like you know fixture fittings those type of things are also part of your material and that is why they are saying history sheet is very important like when the equipment was serviced, when it was purchased, how many, uh, if it if it needs, uh, after how much time it needs uh, some, you know, servicing and those type of things. Those are all, you know, you put it somewhere, you record it. That is part of managing that material, which is equipment and so on. So not a not a hard topic, I would say. Uh, and doing all these things is they would have material handling system. They would create a system of that. And what is how they are uh, right method to get right amount, right material at the right place at the right time in the right order sequence. I gave you example of bolts and those type of things. Right position. That's very interesting at the right position because in assembly line, if you look at manufacturing, assembly line right at the, the product should the component also should be on the right side at the right position also uh, that is very important also right condition cost so see how many things has to be right and how think about the coordination which would be required of different departments that coordination is going to be extremely um, 
important and it is very difficult it's very easy to say in in an environment like this like coordinate but in the real life so you have like 10 different departments and they need to coordinate for you to finalize your purchasing uh, uh, material list and you need to ensure that nothing is uh, is uh, uh, bought in a in more quantity uh, you need to look at the exp expirations you need to look at the discounts so many things you have to really look and of course there are companies use softwares where they coordinate things so softwares are there you can read on those type of things in your company wherever you work they must be managing some type of materials in your office they are managing some type of materials from starting from stationary you would be aware of that but other things also uh, as a matter of fact although the book does not say say this so don't quote me i'm just saying it like anything on the on the plant is material uh, anything you can think about is material uh, Value analysis, very interesting uh, concept. Run some searches on this value analysis. You are analyzing the value of the product you are offering and to give the best value you are putting in the right material. And from there, this term you are aware of value meals. What are those? You get so many, so many things and the price is low. Price would have been higher if you buy these things individually, but when you buy them together, the price comes down and you get all the things and the uh, company has studied that you know when people buy this they're gonna buy this also they would like this also in this so they are creating a package for for the customer uh, and they will call it a value meal although they should not call it value meal because this there is no value in eating this uh, except uh, satisfaction of taste buds this is very unhealthy food. I'm not pr promoting the food. It is just example of, you know, this because many people would know this value, man, value, value meal deal or different names, but this comes from this value analysis. But what the customer values, yeah. Don't run out of material. I've made some notes here. Uh, Okay. The definitions you can, you know, read in your own time. What are the activities would would be involved? Procurement, warehousing, production planning. I've tried to speak about uh, most of most of them, uh, but you would have to go uh, in detail a little bit more on these, and then uh, maybe find examples how companies procure, how your company procure. Try to link it uh, with uh, with real life examples. Like this is types of purchases. New purchase is the first time you are making a purchase from a company. What are the things you would want to think about first time? You need to know that the supplier is trustworthy. The supplier is going to send product in time. How many bad products come or components come in one shipment from this supplier? Uh, how they deal with the uh, complaints, all those things so because it's a new purchase, the first time. Um, straight rebuy, you are just rebuying what you bought last time. So last time you bought six bananas, this time you are just rebuying. So it is a straight rebuy, you are not doing anything. You are just rebuying straight. Uh, Modified rebuy. So you are rebuying, but you are making some modification in your order. So you are saying six bananas and one pineapple, something like that. Yeah. So not hard. It's not hard, but it's just a long topic. So vendor selection, quality, reliability, capability, financial situation, vendor location, geographically speaking, you would have to think about it. Uh, but essentially, you know, the earlier thing which I mentioned, you look in your own life. What materials do you manage? 
uh, like even you are doing laundry when you are washing your clothes you are managing materials because some clothes are can go in the machine some needs hand wash some need hot water some need cold water some would need ironing afterwards some need ironing hot some need ironing medium and so on all of those things this is, this is material management you are doing material is a good example of material management you are doing same thing in the plant also it's just the nature of things and even when you are thinking about iron you look at your iron and it would have different uh, numbers for different type of materials like if it is wool you put it on number three if it is cotton you put on this if it is this you put on this so even the iron is managing material for you the iron itself is a component which has material management in bit so this iron which has this this type of information is going to be sold at a higher price than an iron which does only have the uh, does not have that information it just as a, as one one button and it just it's for how much heat you want and then you have to adjust yeah uh, same thing in the washing machine it is it is telling you if this type of material is is goes you wash it you put the press this button if this type of material goes in you press this what is that it's all of that is material management so th that is why i started with home example because all of us can relate and it makes the topic more interesting and more useful. So think about what are the what are the strategies you use even without knowing to manage this material because I'm sure you have the things in your home and you don't get you know uh, everything you need is in your home. You buy it in that way. Uh, you are not someone that uh, you need something now and you don't have even one piece at your home. You are yeah, organized people and you would have that type of thing. So how you are managed to do that or maybe someone else is doing for you. Uh, so that is material. Even, even the fridge, if you think about the fridge, it is an equipment which is helping you to manage material. If you think about it. Although you would, you would not think about it, you will just put your things in the fridge, but it helps you in managing your material because if some those materials uh, uh, if you put outside they might go bad very quickly but when you put it in the freezer may, uh, in the maybe refri refrigerator maybe the life is going to increase what is that you you are managing material by putting your thing in the in the uh, like ice cream, you would not put it in fridge, you would put in freezer and you will ensure that it is on at a higher level. It's cool, it's cold, not cool, it is cold. So what is that? You are managing your ice cream. Ice cream, what is ice cream? It's material. Yeah. So same way it is the, comp it is just the, because if you are thinking about a product which is being made in the plant, that product has a lot of components and those components are coming from different suppliers many times different locations but then it becomes very difficult so if you're if someone you know works with some interesting company locally ask them how do you manage materials what what is what is what is going on like even you know you when you do go to grocery you will see some trucks which are parked there and they are uh, they are there for they also have a lot of knowledge I learned many things by just talking with those type of people who are in different type of jobs like just a simple you just have to ask how do you manage different type of materials at work what is your observation what are the problems you face You're just asking these type of question and just listen just listen for five minutes ten minutes what they have to say even two three minutes they're going to tell you what you're going to read in the book chapter, I think. That's my experience because book chapter is just written in a longer way so that you they give you some example also and you know, but it, it can be understood by just talking with uh, those type of people who have some type of uh, uh, 
like these type of you would see when you will go in some plant you will see these type of you know, danger and what is these are part of safety and uh, materials management to look at this picture the different materials are there are they managed uh, properly maybe not because uh, maybe th there are bottles which cannot be put together in such close proximity maybe they can catch fire or maybe look at how dirty it is yeah, it's not organized uh, so maybe the labeling is the problem so all of that is material management now it's a bigger picture different construction when if someone has uh, some experience of construction you would know that how important it is to manage material in construction uh, because I have some observation from construction so you know the workers who are working on the job they would know that some material is uh, will be required in next one hour because it is getting short or tomorrow they will need it but they are not going to tell you although they know but you will have to check yourself which materials what quantity they will need tomorrow or later in the in the after in the afternoon they might come in the morning they know that this thing they will need in the afternoon they're not going to tell you they will tell you on time like now like we the cement finished or whatever you know the whatever they are but the blocks finished or whatever they are working on and uh, if you are not checking now you will have to find them so in that time the one hour two hour three hours that's gone so they will just relax in that so that so here you can link this example with self accountability like if the worker is self accountable its total experience will change but generally that is not how it is so as a material manager you will have you will have to coordinate a lot with other departments it's, it's not a job it's not a the way i am looking at it it's not a desk job it's quite a hands on type of job and a lot of technology is involved of course because like the spreadsheets the data it's if the data coming from one department is not correct, it is going to impact your decision making. So you cannot come in the board meeting and say, oh, because that department sent me wrong data, then, then that is why we made the mistake. No, you need to, you need to make uh, assessments based on based on the possibility that sometimes the data can be wrong also. So you need to adjust your orders based on that. I guess this, we need five, but I think I need to get eight just in case. But then, you know, let's say if you need five items of all the components and 100 components are used and you start ordering eight instead of five, then you are ordering three extra for every component and total is 100 so 100 times 3 is 300 so now those 300 components how are you going to store how are you going to pay for them all of those things you would have to consider and that is why it is more and more going in terms of technology like automated automated systems are companies are putting automated systems like automatically placing order next order automatically placing next order yes of course there is supervision and something but like the and sometimes this is very interesting i was reading uh, an article on supply chain management i just remembered the article said that uh, the the your system is linked with the supplier system so i am let's make, say i am making mouse uh, computer mouse and uh, I need, you know, the roller and whatever I need. Uh, um, I make the mouse. So the, the material is coming from, let's say, Russia. And I make it in Jamaica. So uh, whatever is happening in my, in my plant in terms of how I am taking out material from my inventory, 
that information in real time is being updated to my supplier in Russia. So as I take out, let's say 10 items of, you know, whatever automatically updated in Russia. Okay. 10 items taken from inventory in Jamaica, that type of thing is, you know, I was reading in the, in some article. So I found it very interesting, but of course it is expensive uh, to to do that type of thing. There are some, there can be some uh, negative also of this because now you have, uh, you have that data and you are sharing it with your supplier. Your supplier can share it with your competition. So the competition will know your inventory capacity, your output every day, so much information they can, they can have from just from that information, like inventory is everything what you are taking out from inventory, what you are giving back in the inventory, all of that, if that information is with the supplier, the supplier can sell it to. So that type of trustworthiness has to be there also to have this type of mechanism. Uh, it's quite a, quite a lot of things which, which, uh, which would happen. Here is, I saw this, uh, um, this uh, career path of, uh, of a person, like if you want to go into this type of field, like this, look at this from 95 to 2003, the person is purchasing and logistic officer for eight years for Nestle. Nestle is now a big international business. So purchasing how to purchase logistics officer for eight years after that person moves to principal specialist material management or procurement manager uh, uh, purchasing procure material management specialist and work for two years and six months in us and jamaica you can read this bit. and then became procurement category management different categories are there you can read about that with big company like red stripe yeah. And then what? So also adjunct faculty and so on. Yeah. What type of courses the person is uh, teaching? Algebra, mathematics, calculus, statistics, numbers, figures. Why is that? Because that is the backbone of material management. Uh, of course, the software is going to do it for you. But if you also understand numbers, it helps you. So this is how the person built the career in uh, in this in this field. And look at their studies. They they did economics and statistics bachelor. So look at this. It's not a bachelor's in business administration. They did no. To reach here, procurement category manager. Of course you can do, but bachelor's in business business also. But I like this one. That is why I'm showcasing it. I feel that this is the right way to go into this type of field. Economics and statistics. Yeah. Then the certification before doing master. So now you are doing bachelor's. After that, you don't do master's. You do some type of certification. A purchasing manager, internationally recognized type of uh, certification. Then you do master's. Master's in what? Applied statistics. Very interesting. Yeah. And then again, do some certification. Yeah. Supply chain management. And then he did his uh, doctorate in global supply chain management. Yeah. Very interesting career path of a person. Yeah. So think about these type of things. Uh, don't run out of material value analysis. Uh, okay look at this in the wrong time so material management um, i've posted some chapter also from some book uh, you can historical background for example what how the material was managed in the early days how it improved over a period of time uh, you can think about those type of what are the primary functions? What are the secondary functions? Pay attention to that, please. Quality control for materials. Uh, 
if there is some terminology in this which I did not discuss, uh, please run Google search on that and try to uh, know that. But don't just uh, limit yourself to what I have posted. Uh, scan through some more material on material uh, material management and so on. This is University of West Indies, HR, MD. You can scan through this smoking policy, material storage, procedures for officer, material storage, yeah. material storage, waste material, waste material, how they are, you know, in the production area, how they are dealing with waste material, flammable material, some materials are going to. In the maintenance area, material management, waste materials, material storage, yeah. So I've highlighted wherever they have used the terms, materials, and so on. So you can look into this. But look into your own organization. How do they manage materials and so on? That would be nice. Um, for all the all the topics which I discuss, I'm not showing the the clips which I have posted. Generally speaking, I sometimes would show the clips and maybe discuss them, but I'm leaving those clips for you to watch in your own time and reflect on them. For example, this is Toyota material handling. Uh, look into this. Uh, this is DHL, how they manage material. Look into this. Uh, this is a little bit of a humor for you to. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, not I'm going to mute the voice, but can quickly show you what is happening. This is material management. FedEx, so see what is happening, what they are doing. It's just throwing the boxes inside. So different, and the other guy, I think, is also going to do the same thing. Uh, but at least this this girl is, is not, see how she's throwing? Yeah. And it is being recorded. And uh, if, you, if your package is in there, would you want it to be thrown like this? You would like it? Maybe not, you would not, and someone is recording it and then they post it. And the other person is not stopping them and they are like laughing about it and like, okay, I threw it way off. Okay, now the other person has also started to show his skills of throwing. And they are taking it very easy, but what happened is that they posted it and then the top people in the company, they've had to come, extremely top people and apologize uh, become a big thing. Uh, dominoes, for example, I have workers fight for dominoes prank video. They were making dominoes and they were making some pranks on this, how they were managing the material inside. Uh, if you like, uh, like you see what the person did, he sneezed into the material, what they are preparing. Uh, yeah. And uh, they are doing different things with the with the thing, putting it in his nose. Is the is the is making pizza and then putting it in the in the pizza and see what he's doing. Yeah. And uh, this is how they are managing the material here. Yeah. Uh, so think about think about this how this and then again the company came and. Uh, Domino's president responded to prank. You can listen to this and the person came and uh, uh, came and did this thing and, and so on. Uh, uh, the president came and he apologized and he took action against the people and he ensured that this is not how we do the things here and he was sorry and all of that and those type of things happened. So. Uh, and Handel is saying he worked with FedEx throwing is not the FedEx way and I would agree I would like to agree that that is not the way same is the case for Domino's Domino's uh, workers don't do what these workers did but it is just a couple of people in an organization they can do these type of things not manage the material properly and then the company has to bear a lot of cost so of course I'm not saying that FedEx way is this or Domino's way is this, uh, but but this is this is this is this is the reality. This happened. This happened. This is 
this is happening yeah this is happening it is not fedex way but it's happening it is sad that it happened and then the company had to come and apologize and so on so material management is quite a quite a thing uh, for this just like you know you observe in your environment also that is very important uh, book book reading and all of this is important but i feel that linking the things which we discussed with our daily practical life to me that is the most important thing if we can link it to the daily life then we will be able to link it at work also so for example as something is coming in my mind that you know you see these cards uh, and it came in my mind looking at this this vehicle yeah this type of vehicle uh, where they are storing fedex thing so many times at the back or somewhere on the car uh, they would say tell us how i am driving uh, and they would have the company number and and so on so what is that that is an example of material management and the vehicle is the material of the company so they are saying okay if 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 the vehicle would be driven in a wrong way or something we will get the call from the people who are observing so this is a mechanism for material management so look around what are the mechanisms different and look broadly don't just limit yourself to the definition of how the book has explained in the material of course for exam purposes you have to follow the book that is of course you have to do that but i was saying to understand the concepts see around you how different companies are using different strategies to manage material and uh, and uh, and so on yeah so um, i think that is decent information for this please see if you can read uh, the topics in detail and uh, think and reflect on these topics uh, look at the modern ways of managing materials i told you i gave you one example where the inventory would be directly linked with the supplier but there are many other examples uh, which are coming to my mind but you need to do some research if you are interested and uh, try to understand this and appreciate this fascinating topic of material management it is very wide purchasing and understanding different materials innovation what different new materials are being made and research and research and development all of those things thank you